Hello. Good afternoon. It's me, I'm here, I'm back, and I am in the corner again. Because the people that need to be fixing my roof are not coming. And yesterday it rained. So imagine my... My day... Well, my evening, actually. Can, can, can you open up, please? Like, there you go. So yeah, it, it, it's, been a, it's been a rough day yesterday, but oh well. Life's life. You get what you get. But now I get this. I get to play Final Fantasy before more rain comes. Hopefully it's not too bad, but we'll see. So, last time we thought it was the end, but it was not the end. What, what, Yoshua? What, what, what? Oh, 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 hello, hi. Uh, we, we tried an aimbot. Don't, don't, why, why, no, stop, wait, dogs, wait, wait, what, what, why was I here? What? Attacking Yoshua, really? Oh, he's gonna bite my ass, oh, he did. We fought something. Oh, that's right, we fought the Behemoth King. Right here. That's right, that's what we did before. Well, today we're gonna do something different, I think. <laughs> Which is more side quests. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna go here. So, moving on. But yeah, before I do that, I need to get my drink. Yeah. Stab the straw, and then we're good. Everything is good with the world. Whoa. Actually, it's not. Where is it? So if this is the crystal, or where the crystal was, the flying fortress should be over there, behind the wall. That's a big dude. That's a very big dude. Do you think that's also a mic? You're a minotaur. Or an older. No. Well. I'm here now, might as well kill it. Hello, Mr. Ogre. Come on, swing at me once again. Though, I just realized. Well, as cool as the finisher looks, I'm gonna use it now. K, right? To enhance the, the last one that we wanted. This one. Oh, it, it's. We can. Actually, we can. Let's go. Great. I don't remember what we're looking for in here. Village looks abandoned. No. Oh, the. the, the uh, that's right. That's right. Vivian's book. I hear flies, that's, that's, that's bad. 
Potion, that's good. Uh, oops. Have I, have I explored this before? Don't think so. Oh, it might have been closed. That's right. The door must have been closed. Every time they, they leave money, it's just such a ridiculous low amount that, that I'm like, why? Why do put it there? Mm. What's waiting for me inside? A Kashik? A corpse? Nothing? Books. A complete botany of pains. Eight Botidia, or Tale of the Wyvern. White of flower and black of root. The latter of which gives out an inky gall when cut or crushed. The tribesmen of North Storm break their skin with oak and needles, soaking in such, drawing curious patterns about their arms and legs in honor of their heathen gods. So, tattoos? The gall is past intoxicant that a single drop taken by mouth may result in cramps of most painful for five days. In cramps most painful for five days and five nights, or if applied to a wound, certain death. The table of wyvern is, is the poison that they use to brand people, isn't it? His interests were certainly varied. Royal Intelligence Training Report. In the wake of the tragic fire at Cairn Nobert, in eighteen in eight seventy three V and the subsequent depletion of our most highly practiced intelligencers, um, all mainland strongholds were instructed to redouble training in clandestine maneuvers, improvised weaponry and assassination technique in dispatch uh, in dispatch promising volunteers to Stonehair for inspection. This report details progress made by the stronghold at Garnick in reinvigorating Walud's rank of the esteemed intelligencers. This is a Royal Army logbook. Did he take this from the local barracks? The Falkris Fabulary, the Mughal. No spirit or sprite appears more often in Valus Thea Fortes than the humble. Hello, good afternoon. Than the humble Mughal. Hmm. Humble? Okay. Though they are occasionally painted as mischievous souls, akin to pixies or imps, most stories depict them as clumsy yet congenial spirits who delight in helping mankind with their daily labors. Today might not be the day, because I have a lot of cyclists, but tomorrow it might be. I don't know. They are said to have sweet tooths, leading to the common superstition that one must not leave cakes or other sweetmeats to uncovered overnight, lest not remain but crumbs come morning. In appearance, they are like described in being covered uh, uh, as being covered head to toe in soft white fur, except in the small dark wings by which they are somehow able to make flight, and the bright, brightly colored pom-poms that protrude from the tops of their heads. From the tops of their heads. And yet, there is one detail regarding the Mughal that most find more remarkable than even the orb that tops its brow. The fact that the, the creatures actually exist. Preposterous, I hear you cry. Everybody knows that Mughals are stuff of legend. I quite agree, but every legend has its basis in truth. And in the case of the Mughals, the fact may be not so disfamiliar to the fiction, to, yeah, the similar to the fiction. Ancient beasts list the white mole whose feet do not touch the ground among the beasts of the realm, and the, and the illustration beside the name, why it is none other than the Mughal. Of course, it is true that the creatures are not known to still survive in the twins in the modern day. day. Perhaps their miniature wings carried them to other climes. Perhaps they were hunted to extinction. Or perhaps, just perhaps, they do still live among us, hidden away from humanity. From humans view. Let me tell you that the Mughal we have with us is, is not helping our daily chores. Please, they're making us work. Oh, from a distance. Chapter 16. 
Uh huh. The Fall of the Bears. The emergence of the first magic adepts was widely heralded as a gift from the gods. Indeed, the title with which those with the gift came to commonly known as uh, came to be commonly known is most likely a contraction of Bear of Heavenly Blessing, the wording used to, uh, used by the tribes of time. Those born with the blessing were lauded as living crystals and granted high office and plentiful rewards for their status as chosen ones. Over the years, this reverence for their kind would become a full-fledged religion led by the bearers themselves, a development that would prove fateful. The diver nations of the time were unanimous of their disapproval of founding of the church. While the authorities had for years welcomed bearers into positions of power in their own structures of state, they were mistrusting of an organization led by bearers or bearers. Efforts were immediately made to ch ch chasten the chastity, ch chasten, chasten the church and its followers, banning member from holding office, evicting adherents from their homes, and breaking up meetings by force. The church responded by forming a volunteer army to resist this persecution, and yet it continued, creating a cycle of ever increasing bloodshed and rancor, and a growing rift between those born with the blessing of those without. What began with beatings and street clashes would eventually spill over into an all-out war that consumed the greater part of the twins for nigh a generation and decimated the population of men and bearers both. The deluge of blood that stained the land crimson and left an even more lasting mark upon the minds of the Valestian people. After bearers' last uh, resistance was crashed, crushed, the nations of Valestia came together in sign uh, to sign the Continental Accord that, initi that initiated the systems of slavery that persists across the realm to this day. Its well-known phrase, bearers are other than human, has its roots in the bitter war of the years before, being unblessed only excuse for uh, their calamitous refusal to allow the blessed to decide their own destinies. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. We've read everything that's in here, I think. Unless there's like one. Nope. Hmm. What will we find here? Hmm. An open area. What? Leaving so soon, stranger. Hello. We've been watching you. Oh, it's from it, a distance. It's, it's the so the organization. Subtle. I know who you are. Yep. And we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. No. Nope. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make, but by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Your shoulders have to politely is... refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. No, it cannot. <laughs> Come on, attack me.
also. Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, <gasps> but your wits are dull. Wow. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. Mm. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason that belief becomes the truth uh, so you're trying to control the truth we are trying to protect people true, from themselves though. from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain that is all you may keep the book for now the world is small we shall meet again until then wait no. Oh. Damn it. Vanished. Completely vanished. Let's nice. give this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. Yeah. But you know what? First, uh, there is a village we need to visit. Over here. Oh, to find that was to find the records the of the children. That's uh, the. There might have been more parts here that I'm missing. The Behemoth King I killed, but the others I have not. This would be easy. Let's see. Oh, that's right, this was flooded as fuck. I can walk from here. This must be the orphanage. Hopefully the registry is still here. Hmm, probably one of the tombstones. Wait, can we go inside? Oh, we can. Apparently. That's right, we did have the key. locked. I should look around some more before I start breaking down doors. Good. Break the door. <laughs> hidden, uh, hidden door. So now, this one.
Badbah Conservatory, rid of incorporation. The Kingdom of Walud hereby incorporates this institution wherein juvenile bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state as soldiers. Trainees succumbing to the crystals as curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard is strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bare disposal within its bounds is punishable by death. Such asshole. Off. Conditioning schedule. Today's exercises will consist of the price yard, 20 sandbags for such duration as instructor shall dictate, the furnace, burn intensity to be gradually increased, light combat, one to three hellhounds depending on performance. Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. Right. Oh, I need to find the lock. Oh. I have recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I had not so much as thought of her since handing her, her over to the authorities as a babe, but inquiries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood, and now I see her everywhere. Today, one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps of, from my table. It was her smile, the smile she inherited from her mother, the mother I killed by giving birth to a bearer. Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me, my daughters, my wives, all of them, all those children. So many have died at my hand. I can bear the guilt no longer, and so I have decided, tomorrow, I too must die. It will be the last order I give those poor wretches, the last, mo the last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb, and enter my accursed corpse beneath the white tree whose crooked hands reach to the sky in supplication. And besides me, my shame, my curse, the record of all their names, all those I have wronged. This reads like a suicide note. Did the director go through with his plan? Where's the tree? One way to find out. There's the tree. How many years has it been, though, that this place is shut down? This must be the registry. I'm not gonna read all of them. Maybe the names? Hans, Alfred, Franz. Paulina, Bruno, Johanna, Leinhardt, Martha, Martha, actually, Lothar, Dietrich. From nine years old, that's. So many names. Too this many. This place was a slaughterhouse. But where is the architect of all this misery? Oh, there he is. There they are. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. This place is cursed.
Can't you parry that? Fire's in no time. Try brute forcing it. That that's not that's not how you do it. I'm so rich now. So much money, look at that. I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. Yeah. Now it's now it's as, as a good time as it can be. We have a lot of cyclists. A lot of them. A lot to turn in, a lot to start, a lot of hunts too. So yeah, probably not gonna finish it today. Maybe tomorrow. Uncle. Or tonight. I bring good news. I don't know. The field marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has. I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Mm hmm Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might it not be as successfully Quentin. convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate <laughs> to liberate her. One of your co-conspirators? Co-conspirators? Quentin That's would probably wow. call me one of his. But yes. <laughs> Another outlaw, then. Mm. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Yeah. Cool. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, mm -hmm. but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? From who? Out of my head, Clive. you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased she had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. Ooh. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. I don't know why. Just now. I remember those two bandits in the past. Oh, we're, we're back in Port Zelda. Okay. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You find another bloody road? I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That this is sounds like you Icos. Turn as well. Icos. Well, that um, certainly ain't less. Well, says the man with a the belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, <laughs> gentlemen. Okay, Quentin. Perhaps I might Come suggest on. an alternative approach. 
Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. That's a good idea. It's ah, a safer route. I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Hmm? Us? Friends? I can't stand the no man! No boyfriends! Clive, I'm <laughs> beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! <laughs> criminal? How... How dare you! Oh, I need pop. You are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw. Once more unto the breach. Things are gonna be just fine. Just fine. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, mm -hmm. then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Well, we could all go around though. Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? You wanna get drunk? Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, Mike Will. Oh, we're back. Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities. That you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. Oh, he sounds I, uh, so hurt. I want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. They sound like they're in pain when talking about it. Ooh, level up. Great. Signed by representative from, representatives from Rosaria, Dalmachia, and Sobrek. This mutual accord sets the stage for a new age of in storm, if not officially, then at least in spirit. For what great moment in history hasn't been a Accompanied by a little ceremony. Byron Rossfield. It's been a while since been since we've used Garuda. And also since we've been down here. What do you think that thing is? It's a damn distraction, is what it is. Now back to work. <laughs> yeah. How the hell is Sid gonna deal with that? We will. Don't worry about it. We will. We where is our dog? Oh, our dog is somewhere, probably just gnawing at some bone or some shit. Look, it's another. Oh wow. Do I want to give him the news? Should have seen him. The thing didn't stand a chance. Oh. I did wanna 
but with this, this there might be a, a mark I am missing. Yeah, two actually. Cape of Orpsia, some wreck, the Grim Reaper, and also the Patient's Penitent's Gate. So both are over there. Okay, so some wreck. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Wait a second. Do, do. Cape was here. Oop. I'm keeping this in the clipboard. And the other one is Penitent's Gate. Okay. I'll remember that. In fact, that's where we're going now. Penitent's Gate. And then we'll see. Cable's here, so it's here. And the penitent's gate should be closer to here? No. Unless it's it's one of the fortresses. It should be a gate, right? Nope. Oh, uh, yeah, the Penitent's Gate. Let's go here. Th that's the closest one. So it's an Akashic Dragoon, probably. Oh, hello! <laughs> Look at you! Look at you! Wait, where? Where? Behind you. So, oh, it turned around.
Okay, good. Dad. Dion would have been glad to have you back at his side. That's what I said. Such a damn shame. And now we gotta get the other one. But... We need to suck up first. And what can I do for you? Oh, you can... You can suck me up, lady. Boop, 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 boop. You've a keen eye. An excellent choice. An excellent and choice. I help the garrison today. Isn't this our last chance to get... Uh, the metal that we need for the sword? For the Guten Morgen Schmetterling? Guten Tag, Achtung. I haven't seen any of those beastly blue eyes. Because that's this is the last. I mean, the last. Uh, I will. Mark. Okay. Brochia, let's go. Yeah. Do 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 do. Bug. Caution, brother. Spiders. There's there's a big flood in here. Oh, oh. Could it be here? No. Don't think Thanks, girl. I need this, we don't want anything to do with it. Oh. Oh, the crystal in the distance is... That's a distraction. That's what one of the guys said there. Or the end of the world, no, no, no. Where is it now? Can't see it. Should be that that way, but there is a mountain range. Could it be here? No, oh, it's vibrating. Really. The hand of Mimas. 
just Bahamut. I, I will. I will do all of them soon. Oh, is is that what I think it is? Looks like it is you. Hello. The Reaper. Hi. Hello. Oh, it's the Prince of Death. Oh, I am the King of Pain. Not another one. Give me the freaking metal. Come on. Yes! I'm getting tired of these things. No, I am not. Come on, Clive. We, we got the Moot Guten Morgen. Ah. Huh? Well, well I, I got so into it that I almost swallowed the whole thing. Shit. <laughs> Oops. Let's go! Bum, 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 bum. To what do I owe the honor? What do you want? It's a Guten Morgen. No scratches, alright? Oh, we got a trophy! Got the legendary sword, Guten Tapper. Yeah. Can we reinforce it? No. Unfortunately. But we can craft the Euroboros. 
and we can craft this one too. No bad. If yeah. I do say so myself. It's less health but more defense. Should last you a good while. You cannot reinforce any of them. And let's see how it looks like. Okay, wait. Damn. Looks super cool. Yay, I am super legendary. Yay. First the skies, then the crystal. Hello, I will Oscar. not forget this kindness, my lord. I shall go to Eastpool, but as soon as the rebuilding work is complete, I promise to return. You have not gone to Eastpool yet. Oh, ooh, 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 wow, that's a lot of concern for Jill. Okay, a fine house. The two of you have been together for what probably feels like a lifetime now, but there is still a lot you have to learn about that hound of yours. I hit step in front of a bloody raging behemoth if it meant protecting you, but that don't mean you should take it for granted. At the end of the day, he's a hound, and sometimes he just wants someone to, someone to pat his head and rub his belly and give him a handful of couponuts. You do good to remember that. <laughs> I'm not foolish to believe that a single sh uh, shaman at the hands of the town urchins can dispel a lifetime of hatred built up in one's heart. Just as the pot cannot be made clean from, remi uh, from reminding it of its grime. It takes effort, persistence, and more often than not, a stiff brush and bucket of lie. But more than that, it takes time. Fortunately, your courage and leadership has granted us just that. We must now decide whether to embrace or or to waste it. A wise man said that night is always darkest before dawn. It is a good thing that I can that, that I count one who bursts so bright amongst my friends. Blue boy. Though her icon brought her much suffering, the loss of Shiva weighs heavy on her heart. And we would be poor friends indeed if we uh, if we not seek to lighten that burden. Even only, even but only a fraction, before we depart for the skies, I would speak of this more in private. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Aren't you worried about Jill, though? Though he did punch him in the face. Oh, wait. No more letters. Do you remember what you told me that night at Phoenix Gate? That while the fate of Rosaria sits on my shoulders, the fate of its dominance sits upon yours. For we are, but are we not both dominance of fire? Does not the flame of our forebears uh, burn, us, burn in both our hearts? Should I not protect you as you have protected me? You have chosen to be my shield. Now let me choose to be yours. Is this not what our father wanted? What Sid wanted to cast aside fate and forge our new paths. Grant me this, Clive. Let me be your strength. <laughs> Stop it. Here. Not long removed from what from when last you uh, placed yourself between us and peril. I sit and pen yet another letter in which I try to find the words to somehow express my gratitude of an entire town. The gratitude of an entire town. Still, something feels different about our latest triumph. Where in the past we, learned, we leaned ever so heavily upon your good graces, this time we found strength elsewhere in ourselves. Our hardship has shown us that which should that that which should uh, have been apparent all along. We're not as different as we want to believe. Does a peasant love his homeland any less than a noble? Does a bearer love his family any less than? Another man does his own. It is this love that has united us and given us this true strength. Should every thrall, Akashic, bandit, and brigand in the realm come charging at our gates, we will not fret, we will not falter, we will fight. 
and we will win. She, she's such a strong person. My Lord Marcus, I write to thank you for the kind consideration you have shown for those whose names are written within the pages of the Book of Martyrs. I know that it would uh, move them deeply to know that the first shield of the Phoenix laments their passing. Though each and every member of our order stands ready to sacrifice their lives in service of the Phoenix, I do not doubt that those who are taken before their time go with regret for long years of duty left on them. That they should uh, that they should live on in the memory of a proud son of House Rossfield, such as yourself, shall surely go uh, some way to soothing their sorrows. May the Phoenix's flame burn ever in your heart. Bringing together three men from different from differing backgrounds was not to be without a difficult some difficulty. However, come together we did for a better Valesthea. The triunity was but a first step, a longer, more bitter journey awaits us all, one that will almost certainly end in hardship. Yet, what matters most is not the destination, but what we can learn from one another while we go while on the road there. You have paved the road for us with your courage, Clive. Now we must have courage to walk it. They are all so good. Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. We do have a bunch of new trophies here. Look at that. Look at how much we have found. We've taken every single banner we have found anywhere. The veal, veil, I mean the briar's kiss. My heart. That's helmet. The accord. And this parent sword. Damn dog. Breaking my heart. Okay. Uh, where to now? Yoshua? And then the registry. Oh, he's with Toro. Joshua, I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but since we've returned from Drake's spine, I've felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever. That you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Oh, speak for yourself. We've been living together for five years. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the Duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill. <laughs> yeah, to see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down <laughs> to the pot boys combing the countryside. In the rain. A thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say... He was none too pleased. Of course he was not. And it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? <laughs> I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? True, true, true. True. The man speaks truth. There's something about him. You should have seen. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Sure, it wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. No. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. Oh, tell. From what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. No. 
They most certainly no, did not. No, but he, he, he did a fine job. He deserves the passing Ember mark. Ember lost his nerve in the face of a beast of prey, but he didn't lose heart. He pressed on, and he achieved his aim. And is that not what we ask of our scouts? Indeed it is. Thank you for your honest appraisal, Sid. The fact remains, however, that Ember will not always have a battle-hardened warrior on hand to pluck him from the jaws of peril. True. All I have gleaned from this trial is that without someone watching his back, Ember is little more than a liability. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. Yep. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade. And any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conquering arm. Yeah. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Exactly. Fine. Exactly. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. <laughs> I'll show you. Just you wait. Daft as a brush, that one. But his heart's in the right place. He wants to help. Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. Yeah, poor guy. That time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. Couldn't hurt. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will ya? Hmm. I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. Yeah. Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. Forgive me, Sid. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things really do these days. Yeah. But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I, I will, Sid. Thank you. Oh, reward. Is it the Genji glove? How may I help you today, Clive? It is! All yours. And... Oh, this too. Here you are. Is it all of them? Oh, it's all available items. Cool. What's it? To sail for beaten seas. And a fallen enigma. Best of luck out there, Sid. Which means we can craft something new. Also, we have to equip the Genji gloves. Diamantite gauntlets, but what about this? And all the damage we can get. What do I have here? Ice Age again. Again. Am I using here a good near? I'm using. I mean, it reduces the cooldown. How about Impulse? Wait. What am I using? Fire Breath and Giga Flare. Heavenly Cloud. Heavenly Cloud. Mm. Could. Two point five seconds, that's a lot. Let's use it. It's better than not having anything to do with my build right now, so uh, that's not changing anytime soon. Okay, we need to talk to mid and then that person over there. Let's go to mid first.
Hello, mid. Mid? Tell me this is all you need. Oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all I need. <laughs> it's most. Oh, of what no. I need. After you left, I went over the figures again. No. And I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <sighs> and. And a cogwheel. Just a tiny oh. one. Though we know where to find one. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. Yeah. When they took apart your scales, there was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I. They didn't use it. No. When we put the scales back together. Don't blame the children. The young ones. But why would the. You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. <laughs> That's very cool. I call back to the. Has Midadol mentioned a new project? Mess up. Hello, children. I hope you have the thing. Sid, is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. Hmm. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? Actually, just so yes. happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! Oh. We remember! Roasted! Roasted! We saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. <laughs> That's. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Look. I found it. Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. Oh, she'll ask for them. But I'll let Mid know about your hoard. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. Let's go. Okay, here you go, man. Well, did they have it? They did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect. You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own, but with the right cog in the right place. Well, you just wait and see. Let's see what you can make. Is it the high wind? Are you going to call it the it? high wind? It's a prototype though. It is. Here goes nothing. It's got oars. Oh. Titan's tits. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. <laughs> right. Be a ground ship. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad. Hmm? I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes, their children, their mums, and their dads. 
Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head? Or do I follow my heart? Question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, I felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right write about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Yeah. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling him over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you <laughs> ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one, so that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. <laughs> like that one, yeah. <laughs> She's so sweet. It's a shame, but 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 she also has a point. Of course, if I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <laughs> My dad always said, dream big. But it ain't the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. Mid's dangerous dream of flight. Immortalized in miniature. My dad always said that there were two ways of living life chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And there, indeed, it is. It's very true. Has Mitadol mentioned a new project? She's always got a new project. I hear that you traveled to Ash. Sid, yep. did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. Oh, this ain't so happy. I may. The bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces, like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. 
No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive when so many others died in that awful place? So that you could remember them. It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. One of their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. We're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid, I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach, and the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering, and in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity. Were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. Sad. Okay, Vivian now. Vivian and the sil silver lines, but who's got so more to One moment you I'll think you have freed the realm from her fate, the next a darker one rears up to replace it. What awaits us when we finally attain release? True freedom, or something else entirely? Suspicious character, you are very suspicious. You have fulfilled the the purpose of your name. Well, let's go to Vivian first, and then to the silver linings. With all that's going on, silver lining is all we can cling to, so. this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something, that the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did, or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see, mm. a firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather... closer perspective than I had intended. The more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. 
So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. Vivian's Nine Tales Scholarly Headway, awarded to her upon the completion of her studies at the University of Camber. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe you, as I do. I wonder if we'll get all the trophies for our room. A missive has been delivered. A lot of letters after finishing the side quests. Gav? Oh. No, no, no. We've heard this one before. Thank you. Gav? You all right? Something Johnny. troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just. Edda's baby will be coming soon. And I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north. Families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I'll let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Ed is due any day now. And I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. Mm -hmm. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's not lucky in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need, a feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. <laughs> I was gonna start by asking around with traveling traders plying the northern borders. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend. Is Ambrosia Clive. white or silver? I won't forget <laughs> this. Because Ambrosia does look like a silver chocobo, to be honest. Oh, that's right, we got a new song. Let's see. Whoop! We got all of them! No! Such a cool theme. Ah, but it's a little bit too much for the hideout, though. Okay, wait, what do you have, Karen? But Still alive, are you? Yeah, we are. Coin purse weighing you down. Um... I've never ever bought an you know. elixir. Go I don't want to use it. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. Hey. Come on. Oh, another quest? Wow. That, that's, 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 a, that's a lot. When you think you're done, making amends. I am aware that there are matters of much greater import which demand your attention. But should you find yourself a moment, I bid you vis visit me in the shells that I might ask a single favor concerning His Highness, Prince Dion. Hypocrites. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. Dion. I mean, if there is a way to make him not 
die, I guess. Sure. How many are we missing? Well, quite a few. <laughs> it's a nice beret. Uh, so Hippocrates is the last thing inside. Oh, 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 oh! Another hunt. Yes. Do 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 do. But first. Hello, Tom. Northman Harpocrates. I received your note. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> yes. You spoke of making amends with Dion. But I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. Oh. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the dragoons. His studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Oh, you should. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom. And what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tail. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You'll start trying your ass out. I've seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Hmm. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. Yeah. And now wait a minute, because that Moogle, that Moogle has some more work for us. And it might be on the way. Dun -dun. Come on, Dion, come on. It's not the end. Not for you. What you got in here? A wailing banshee? Garnic lewd?
Um, what's this Garnick? Yep. But why a, a Banshee now? What, what? Okay, never mind. Just, just go and kill her, I guess. Good God. Fly up. No, doggies. No, no, no. No. Leave us be. Na 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 na. Banshee, there you are. It's been a while since we've seen one of these. Harmon's madness lives on. You should. I just realized it's a freaking guitar loop. Hello, Nine. Thank you for the reference. I love it. You should be. I'm so happy with the reference. I have no idea. Clear the hunt board? The tall of them? That, that, that's, that's, the case. that's all of them? Huh. 
Yeah, we do have uh, here. Okay, so we'll go that way. Well, the hunt board is done. <laughs> okay, Nectar, you cannot enslave me anymore. I'm coming for your pom pom. Just imagine if I could use the pom pom as a cosmetic and just have Clive wear it. Or maybe Yoshua. Or. No! Torgo with a pom pom. Yes. Yes, Square Enix. If you're listening, now you know. That'll be great. Where, where, where Ambrosia? Hello. You do look kind of silvery to me. So. Oh, the bridge. Ooh. Don't look down. Crap! Whee! Seems this place has been flooded twice over. Purple flowers blooming next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Nope. There Safe. it is. Oh, come on. Nice try. Ow. Sixty nine K, nice. Here they are. Might as well. Nope, not the hurt properties. Not yet. Uh, first, we need to go here. Yep. Jail is way more important. Oh, and it's a place with. Not being to. What? Oh, what? 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 Visit all the areas. Ooh, we're 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 making progress. Oh, we are withered. This is the place, but I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but it's the only place I know of. Knew of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Marketing. Someone at the backyard. To the hideaway, then. Wait. Okay, so there's nothing here. Uh, 
Martha. She has to know about the feather. Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gav needs. Excuse me, I'm looking for something. Oh, well, then I'm your yeah. man. Well, we'll see. Silver chocobo feather. Then I am not your man. Or maybe not. <laughs> Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago, claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo. Near some gutted hovel, not far from Eastpool. Mm -hmm. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you. So he's pulled now. Looking for a man who was attacked by a silver chocobo. Hello? Excuse me, Herr. No, you're not a man. Uh, I assume. Uh, have you been attacked by a cho silver chocobo? Someone upstairs, maybe? Those, those rooms up there, it's like the landlady in seven, in the seven, sector seven slums. Same display. Looking for the... Oh, do you? No. But might as well. Nope. At all, is it? Just because the heavens have gone to wreck already, don't you? You! Oh, do you, traveler? You're Keep a look man, of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Nope. Or perhaps a body etching of a viceroine? No, no. Uh, 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 maybe chocobo time. feather, a silver I'm one. looking for a silver chocobo feather. Oh, if that's the case, rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for years. Word is they were all hunted for their feathers. Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Hey. Didn't bring them much, nor their bows. Wow. Many are still out there. I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. I've got greens of all One more. Any merchant around here that might know of build a chocobos? So sturdy, even a banner. No. You. Can I help you with summer? You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. Okay, but sorry. If it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh, yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. No. A silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds almost too good to be true. But Doesn't it? Since I'm already here. Good girl. Run like the wind. Let's go. Whee! Die. Man, so many things we need to take care of. It's tracks. I found it's for a change. Footprints. Chocobo. More tracks. And these look fresh. This inside. Chocobo them? was here. And recently. Perhaps it still is. Is he a Kashik though? Because if he is, we're fucked. I'm gonna bring a feather just. Thing. 
made its nest here? Are there any chocobo oh, eggs? <gasps> Crap! Uh, Warwick is from Five, I believe, or the older Final Fantasies. They're, they're not quite. You're so beautiful. Hi. I love you, Bobby Corwins. Silver, Bobby Corwins. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. No, no. Just borrowing a feather for my friend. Yee. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, there's... <laughs> Let's get this back together before they change their minds. They will not. No eggs, no eggs yet. But those were two chocobos. I'll be making big family. Okay, so any other place we need to be at before we no hide out. We got a one, two, three. Go. Huh. Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. Yeah, but first, let's give this to Gav, and then to her pockets, and then it was no we'll take it trouble. from there. Why? Clive, oh, you're back. You're, you're, How'd you get on? you learning Any from luck? him now? Any luck, you say? Look at this. Crystals crack. Is this what I think it is? It is. Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. Right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on Eastpool's doorstep. They'd have had to move on before long. Even if you hadn't have turned up, they'll find a new home. Trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. <laughs> anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. Mm, reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Hmm. <laughs> Like the fact I'm true. as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your Avis, Sid. Oh. I slew one of my own at last. Cool. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. <laughs> there we go. What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. I <laughs> <How> will I. <laughs> I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him my best. Eh, you can give it to yourself. Come on. That's right. Both of you rescued her. Why not go together? Right? But first, now that we're here. Horseman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? Yep. I think I did. <sighs> you did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. I'm I was wondering when next you visit. I have a few new notes that might interest you. 
quite the find for you today. Barnabas' mother. This is the children of Domecus. With a ball of steel and refrigerator. Mm. You wish to study the tomes? No. But knowledge hoarded is knowledge. Thank you again, Clive. Oh. Fairly well. We do have a lot to talk about. It's additional dialogue that I might, you know, might as well. But as we're approaching the two hour mark here, might as well finish the side quests first. Dion? Your Highness. Would you do me the honor Can of you call him Dion? Me? No. It is time then. No, not yet. <laughs> no. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. But he wants not to after see everything you. I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. I think it would that be quite the contrary. To do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. Yeah. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. That scene. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Come on, go. Let's <laughs> give them space. Take the children, though. Master Harpocrates, pray. Accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tail? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environment in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, Your Highness. It 
its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Take it. Come on. Master Harpocrates, I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Can you punch him in the face and... Come on. Dear. Our roots do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Why do you have not a to name? To the and tales. Ouch. No notice. I shall plant their seeds that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soil in the hideaway is to their liking. Why? These flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. <laughs> when it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A stolas quill. Or more precisely, my stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Along with Dion's trinket, whatever it is he gave us. Bahamut's mercy. Oh, six seconds for Gigaflare. Wow. Wait, we're getting that. Lorman Hippocrates' best loved writing implement, whose snip has quite many a learned tome. It is said that an owl's feathers are st uh, steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, to the backyard first, I guess. Wait. So what do I owe the honor? Uh, can you make something with the want? new materials we have? No. 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 And. And. And that's See it, you my will. friend. <laughs> Let's see if Nigel has... 
a lead of those lilies or whatever it is. Uh, I call it moon, moon lilies, but, but that's that's not what. Fredrika? Hygel? Oh. What brings you down from the heavens, Sid? <laughs> I need your advice. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies snow grow. Snow daisies, well, they're white. Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill no. would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Thank you. W weren't we there just now? Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sandwich. Oh, 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 that's right. Ah, the fields beyond Northreach. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. Oh, Yote knows. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Whose shores border the meadows. Off we go then. Yeah, but not before we visit this lady with the baby. The lady with the baby. Do we go up and around? Or around? Do you think it'll the hideout is actually the pretty big. There's a lot of running around. Also, I need to talk to Nectar. He needs to know. We, we, we're done with him. Oh, where am I going? Gav? I was just about to go in, but then I thought it might be better if you went first. What with you being the head of the family and all. <laughs> you brought her home, so... Yote. Is there aught I might assist you with? His Grace and I. Often spoke on our travels, and a certain saying of his remained with me even now. Duty is the enemy of freedom. At first. I thought that he spoke of his own plight, that though he was able to roam the land again, his duty to unearth the truth about Ultima prevented him from being truly free. But I came to understand that he spoke not of himself, but of me. It was my duty to him. That his grace judged to be uh, inimical to my own freedom. I believe that this is why he bade me remain here. That I might at last be released from my duty to him. Few others in his position would allow the cares of a humble attendant to weigh so heavily upon them, nor take such drastic action in response. I okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Yote, but unduly. are we here? Ah, me lords. How are you feeling? Well, thank you. Is something wrong? Wrong? No, nothing like that. Uh, uh, what it is, is... Uh, uh... Go on, please. Come on. It's beautiful. Did you make it? We did. I, uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like. It's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a bairn's on the way. I, I, I mean, a, a baby. Mm -hmm. To let them know that they're part of the family too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I... I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords. For everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Ah. <sighs> Clive, fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. <laughs> I could be convinced. How spending time with these people is gonna destroy my heart if something happens. <laughs> oh, another cutscene. Oh no. The 
don't you think you've had enough? No, we're celebrating. I'm <laughs> gonna be a father. <laughs> what? I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Do we go? Right in these dark times. It wasn't long after me tenth name day. My mum told us she was with child again. <laughs> I was over the fucking moon. A brother? I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over. What with me being the runt of the litter. I thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister. And then I didn't. She was a big old family gone in a blink while I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Oh no. Great brother I turned out to be. I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. You shut your mouth. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. Punch him. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. <laughs> Have you finished? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Cheer this one up. Why? You're our best scout. Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like, uh... That was only the once. <laughs> exactly. You learn from it. And here you are after founder knows how many missions stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. <laughs> right? <laughs> would be you. Because you're our brother, Gav. My brother. <sighs> Your brother. Which means that when the time comes, I get your room and your sword. Not that good to Morgan. <laughs> I do not like that. I really don't. Don't say shit like that. I may have had one too many. <laughs> Hangover. You may have had ten too many. <laughs> uh, I said I was thirsty. I can drink water. <laughs> Gotta get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive. What is it? Thanks for... You know. I know. Oh, they are best friends. Oh. Stop it. Hello, my friends. Speaking of best friends, they, there you are. Do you think they'll come back? Uh, so that's all for the hideout. 
do have letters to read, but... I want to speak to a mogul and tell him that we're free from his slaver hand. You. Dealt with all of them. Can anyone tell you about where he came from, Koopo? You're not from the forest. Oh, I am from a forest, certainly, but which forest? Well, which forest? <laughs> I can't tell you that. It's a secret, Kubo. That, that's bloody. Then what were you going to tell me? Nothing. I was making sure I hadn't said anything I wasn't supposed to. And if you had? You don't want to know, Kubo. This little piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I love you, Nectar. You're so dumb. What a dork. Ah, uh, yeah. Nope. Oh, uh, we're going. We're going to the place that, that's completely flooded. And now my eye help the garrison today. Ah, North Reach, so beautiful. Haven't seen any of those beastly blue eyes. Yeah, this one would be a good one to end it, right? Jill, Do be careful. I will. Oh, we will. Let's go, Come girl. Wee. Do 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 do. No, no, no. Raptors, go away. The meadows are vast. Where do we even start? mentioned the coastline. We can start there. Yeah. Oh, there they are. But it's full of the, the shit. You see them? Well, it's cute to you, but you need to go. We, we have important business here. Finisher again. No 
That was harder than I expected. Right. But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Indeed they are. Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. It appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, oh. is up to you. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? Hmm. I think I'll leave this one for tomorrow before we before we go into origin. Yeah. Because I need to eat. We'll start with that and then we'll go straight into the end, I guess. Oh! Okay. Tomorrow I'm planning and I'm doing it at like around the same time-ish. So if you want to catch the ending, if it is the ending, then same time. Same time. Okay, have a good rest of the day, evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.